But you know, um, I'm really, I'm really sick and tired of how the world, and I'm not just meaning the United States. I mean the world is treating generalized anxiety, social anxiety, agoraphobia, all of these real issues. People really are afraid. I mean, here in America, I'm kind of starting to see that this is a violation of one of my amendments, you know, like my Eighth Amendment right, you know, uh, I think it's the Eighth, I believe. It's just, it's, it's extremely cruel to treat somebody like they're treating, like they're treating us. It, it's like this is our fault, you know what I mean? Like, like, like this is something, I mean, this, this would be like, this would be like a guy who got hit by a bus, sued the, the bus company, lost, you know, his insurance ended up paying for a walker, I'm sorry, not a walker, a wheelchair, uh, you know, one of those nice motor cart wheelchair things, and it never comes. That's kind of what it's like. You're just waiting on that little motor car so you can get a, you know, around in life. But until then, someone's got to help you every day. And that's that's what I feel that this is like, really. I really feel that this is this is how we're being treated. I mean, we're we're being treated like stray animals on the road. You know, oh well, let's let's pick them up and well well we'll drive by a couple times and if we keep seeing it, we we might take it home maybe or take it over to the shelter because we don't want to deal with it, so we'll take it to somewhere else. And that's how I feel. And, uh, you know, like I said in the beginning, I am here. There are three major steps to overcoming anxiety, okay? Uh, four, sorry, four, four major steps. Number one, denial. That's the biggest one, denial. And I want you to think good and hard on this right now denial. What are you talking about denial? You sit there all the time and you think something bad's happening. Just like me. And you run, you may, you run to you know, the emergency room or, or your doctor's office and say, hey, can you check this out? You know, this is really freaking me out. Can you check this out? Denial. And I'm not preaching to the choir. I have hypochondrosis. I'm in denial every hour of my life. But I know I have anxiety. And I know that when I run to the hospital and I say, this is what I feel, I'm pretty sure it's anxiety. I don't lie. I don't say, oh, I don't know what the fuck's going on. You know, this is happening. My heart's racing, all this stuff. No, I say, I'm pretty sure it's anxiety. I'd like some help. Not as calm, but you get the gist of it. Denial is, is one of the worst things that we we deal with or or we don't deal with it's kind of like having an intervention this video sorry didn't mean to put anybody on the spot there at your house denial you need to stand up and say I have anxiety issues I have problems whatever you're going through is anxiety it's stress it's just stress and anxiety seriously unless you have real problems that have really been diagnosed by a doctor or the hospital or a physician it is probably just anxiety and by probably I mean it is not gonna lie to you anxiety like I said in the first and second video causes everything anxiety can even cause you to feel and this is for most of us anyways to feel like you're having a heart attack or a stroke. You ever lay in bed and you, you you know a lot of us like to lay like this in bed and you feel you feel you know you feel an arm you feel your arm kind of shake like this but it's not really shaking you know or parts of your body or half your body goes numb like oh my god am I having a stroke no it's anxiety unless you're older then I would really go get that checked out but when you're in yeah you know, my age group seriously that stuff is almost unheard of. Heart problems can happen. 
everybody has palpitations. Palpitation is where a valve doesn't work properly during a beat, a little bit of blood backs up into the lungs, and it fixes itself. Or you have a heart attack. But for people like me, having a heart attack at 24, unheard of. Really, it's almost impossible. Really. Now, once you get over 35, then you need to start watching yourself. Once you hit over 50, then you really should watch yourself. The stress, I mean, sorry, let me start over. Anxiety will never kill you. It's never killed anybody, anybody. Stress will kill you. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what any doctor says, stress will kill you. Okay, it's not gonna kill you tomorrow or today, but stress will kill you. It takes years off your life, really. It takes a big toll on the heart, a huge toll on the intestines, and a major toll on the liver and kidneys, and even your re reproductive system. Stress really hurts the body, really. It's not something the body likes. The body likes to be relaxed and calm, really. But a body in motion stays in motion, okay? Number one, denial. Number two, support. You need someone to go to or a group of people to go to. And I'm not saying everybody needs to come to me because I'm the shit. No, there have been a lot of people that I just can't help, really. I, I try my hardest. I just can't help them. So they need professional help. I'm like the middleman before professional help in my eyes. I'm the guy that you would go to who knows as much as the professional help, but it's not going to ask you, you know, hey, can, can you throw me, you know, 25 bucks, you know, or, or you know, you owe me money. No, I, I don't do that. I'm just there because I generally try to help people. And before you say, now wait a minute, Justin, I've seen your Facebook posts asking for money. That was to build up my website. It's done. The website's built. I've got full control over it. I don't need any money from anybody. Um, I asked those who cared about the cause to help. I sure did. And I'll, I'll tell you the exact amount of money it cost. Uh, $322.33. And that covers me for 10 years. That website will never close. Thanks to people who ever donated, especially Teresa. I don't want to say this right now. I just want to get this out. I believe I'm saying her name right. Teresa. You have helped me like a mother would help me. You have given me money for food. You have given me money to support my website. You have given me money to play with. You have even given me money because you had extra and wanted it to go somewhere else. You truly are somebody who needs to be put on the spot and, and be given thanks, really. And, and I'll tell you what, the money went to food, my website, and I actually never played around with it. It went to those places that I deemed most needed. So I really do thank you for, I'm not gonna mention how much, I'm not, but I really do thank you for the money, really. Truly appreciate it, really. Um, anywho, number three, medication. Medication, we all need medication for the anxiety issues. Seriously. Stay away from pop too. Caffeine agitates um, uh, anxiety. It really agitates it real bad. Anyways, medication. Yes, good Lord, yes, you need medicine. Yes, you do. Um, I know a lot of you do it without medicine, and I don't know how you do it. I don't. I've got to have a clonopin every eight hours, sometimes every six hours. If I don't, I'm in the hospital every day. And it's not because I'm withdrawing off medicine, it's because I'm going through anxiety and panic every day. I don't know how you do it. So congratulations to those of you that are doing it without medicine because you choose to, not because you're forced to, because you choose to, congratulations. Number four, 
And this one, I really like to think that, that this one is, is a minor issue, but you need an outlet. And I don't mean walking and running and jogging and boxing. No, you need an emotional outlet. You could be male or female. You need to let your emotions out. I cry all the time because my life is shitty. I cry all the time. You probably may not see that in me, but I cry all the time. Trust me, all the time. And you need an outlet. If you don't let your emotions out, you become what we call implosive. Okay? There, a great example, and this is from anger management, swear to God, great example, this is like the best example ever. There are two forms of anger, explosive, implosive. Explosive, okay, is like the guy, you know, in line at, at Walmart who blows up at the cashier because his check bounced, okay? He just blows up for no reason, cursing, screaming, throwing shit, it just blows up walks out the door and he feels fine. That's the good kind of angry. Implosive is the cashier who day after day takes the same shit over and over and over and over and one day walks in and kills everybody in the store with a gun. You don't want to be implosive. Trust me. So crying isn't going to make you depressed. Trust me. It does, it doesn't depress you. It's actually a good, humans are the only, if you didn't know this, humans are the only animal, actually we're the only thing on earth that cries because of sadness or anger, or pain. Uh, we are the only ones who cry because of emotion. You need to cry, just saying. I don't care how big and buff you are, how egotistical, etc. You need to go somewhere, do your thing and just let it out. Don't care if it takes a whole hour, two hours, even the whole day. Spend your whole day sobbing and watching Life Touch or something, Lifetime, whatever it is. Just spend a whole day and vent. I swear to you, you're going to feel better. Really. You will physically feel better. Uh, actually, I might end up, damn, I might end up making four videos, but I think I'm going to cut it short on this one. I think I'm going to cut it on the three for anxiety for right now, for right now, because I want I want you guys to really think about these videos, these three, the series of videos right here, and I really want you to soak in the information, and I know this is just like a guy blogging, but soak in the information that I've thrown out there and, and, and attest it to your life, really. Just examine your life and tell me I'm right. I want, so, I, want, I want one of you to really do this. Examine your life and tell me I'm wrong. Because I'm 100% right. I'm 100% right. Anyways, you guys know where to find me. I'm on YouTube. If you ever need me, shoot me a message. I read, I've... Like I said, I read all of them. I've actually read all of them. And if you want the number, hang on. I've got two minutes left. If you want the number, hold on, let me open up my inbox. I actually got one right now. <laughs> Come home, bitch. Yes, yes, that was very funny. Uh, let's see here. Uh, how many pages do I got? I'm going to go up here and put in 50. Yeah, uh huh. Uh, let's put in a hundred. Yeah, let's put in. Hold on, let's put in five hundred. Okay, five hundred. No messages in five hundred. How about um, four seventy-five? Message. Oh, two messages. So I guess that's roughly where it ended. Sweet. Okay, and each inbox can carry twenty. So if I've got four hundred seventy-five, four hundred seventy-four, four seventy-four pages of messages. 9,480 messages. I have read probably 88, 90% of them. I really do do this, really. Seriously. Um, think about it, examine your life, 
make some changes.